Avoiding the Chinese market, you are crazy right now. China is super cheap, says Kevin O'Leary. Is he telling the truth? Is he lying? What do you think about China investing in China in these times? Let's hear what he has to say about China and the Chinese market. This guy asks him about China and how it's so cheap and what do you do in this market? Let's get into this video. Looking incredibly, incredibly cheap. Can you invest right now with all of this regulatory overlay in China to take advantage of these depressed prices? You know, it's such a great question you're raising here, because if you're looking for long-term secular growth, there's no question the Chinese economy over the next 20, 25 years is going to become the largest economy on Earth. There's no stopping that, no denying it. And Do you believe that? There's no stopping it, there's no denying it, that China's going to be the largest economy on Earth bigger than U.S.? Remember, the economies always change. At first it was like Britain, before that was Egypt or whatever. It's always changing, and now China is going to be number one. Do you think that could last? Because remember, China is dealing with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff has been happening with the zero COVID policy, with the real estate crisis, debt. There's a lot of stuff happening, man, and the U.S. relationships kind of going south. Like, who knows what could happen? But, man, Kevin O'Leary is saying that China still does have one of the biggest populations, and just the brain power in China is crazy. They develop stuff really fast. They're growing really fast. So they have a big, big chance of actually succeeding in this journey of becoming number one. If it's going to become number one, why wouldn't you invest in Chinese companies unless China invades Taiwan? And then that's a whole different story. And there's an economic war, a technology war, a regulation war going on with the United States. That too could be temporary. We've seen this happen in steady conductors where they're no longer allowing certain chipsets to be shipped to China. But frankly, these economies need each other. So to have no allocation to Chinese market makes no sense whatsoever. Again, you've got a stomach volatility. And I agree with that. China and U.S. need each other. It's so fundamental that they need each other. Can you imagine right now China and U.S. basically just denounce each other? Inflation would be like, oh my God. I don't even want to know what inflation is because... The exports from China to the US, it's in the hundreds of billions of dollars. That's a hundreds of billions of dollars of GDP going down south just between the two. Remember, USA is begging China to buy its products and they're complaining. Can you imagine if China stops buying US products? Who's gonna buy all that freaking demand or all that supply? Like, there's not another country that's buying all the supply like China. So they need each other. They have crazy minerals that they sell to U.S. that U.S. needs. Like, they have a lot of developmental stuff that U.S. needs. So, it's just impossible to see that they both are just, like, gone from each other. They split from each other. Like, that would just be a shocker. Like, I don't think that could happen, like, right now in these times. Like, it needs, USA needs at least, like, 10, 20, 30 years to be completely separate, dependent, and not needing China, in my opinion. Even companies like Apple, like what kind of haircut would Apple take if it lost all its Chinese customers? Like, I don't even want to know. The Chinese consumer is emerging. I own China stocks. I have an index of them, particularly global internet behemoths. So he could be biased right now because he owns a lot of these Chinese companies. So maybe he just wants these companies to go up so he could sell. Who knows? But he's probably biased. Like, I'm biased too. Like, I own Baba, I own Tencent, I own JD.com. So, yes, I want to see these companies succeed. Just being honest. Large companies like Alibaba and, and many others that are the reflection of what the American economy has gone through. If you own Amazon, why don't you own Baba? The same idea. The Chinese are using online services the same way. Tencent, others, they're there because that consumer is demanding it. So, th there's a lot of political issues around owning Chinese stocks, the threat of delisting them. But all of that is noise. To have no allocation to the world's fastest growing economy, and yes, I agree it's slow, but you know long term it's going to be the biggest, is crazy. I mean, that to me makes no sense. Long term it's going to be the biggest. Everything that's happening right now is just noise, it's just volatility. In 10 to 15, 20 years, Baba, Tencent, they're just going to go crazy again. And that's what he's predicting. Crazy amount of growth into the future. Guys, tell me what you think, man. And look at this. Shout out to Summit on Twitter for bringing this up. 
This is Morningstar's fair valuation estimate, it's just fair value, not overvalue, not undervalue, just fair value and what these companies are trading at right now. So Alibaba right now is at $89, fair value $179, Tencent $38, fair value $70, Milwan $21, fair value $25, Daisy.com $157 right now, $104 fair value, NetEase $87, $139 fair value. So just look at these estimates from Morningstar. And I think Morningstar is being conservative or they're giving their decent forecast for these companies. And I honestly, realistically, I agree with these valuations, which is pretty crazy because usually maybe they're getting, they get it off or they just don't know what they're talking about or they just use some random metrics. And I did my own DCF on a lot of these companies and I agree with all of these valuations. So Guys, you just have to deal with the noise. You just have to know you own strong businesses with competitive advantages. Alibaba, Tencent, they're going to keep growing. They're not going to grow anywhere. They're staples in the freaking economy in China. It's like getting rid of Amazon or getting rid of Apple or getting rid of one of these companies like Google. Imagine not investing in those companies just because they're, have, they're dealing with a lot of noise or just like issues. If you believe in the future of China, I think that Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com are going to be just fine five, 10 years down the road if you know they're solid businesses. So, guys, tell me what you think about these valuations. Tell me what you think about what Kevin O'Leary said about China, investing in China, just avoiding all the noise and all the drama and all the political risk. If you agree that they just have to come to a conclusion, China and the USA, they're not going to split apart. Guys, tell me what you think about this. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe to my channel and I get back to you in the next video. Peace.